Brisbane.com.au. Welcome back to the program. Our co-host, James Manning, editor and publisher of Media Week, joining me up here on the desk. And James, we're going to take a look at the radio sector and through the latest ratings that are released by GFK. And we'll start off in Sydney and we can see 2GB coming in on top there. Yeah, look, Survey 6 has been good for 2GB and Smooth again, which has managed to hold uh, top spot in Sydney. Some people thought maybe it'd be a one-hit wonder, but it's, uh, it's proven the format's very good. Kiss and WS, two ARN stations. They have the biggest breakfast stations, the biggest breakfast shows, but they just can't grab that top spot back. They'd love to get that for bragging rights. And uh, both Southern Cross uh, stereo stations not in the top five. They'd like to be in there too. I bet they would. Let's move over to Melbourne now and take a look. Yeah, look, uh, 3AW and Fox. Look, it's just like the uh, the old days, Kate. They used to dominate here. Fox has been off the boil for a little couple of years there, but they're back with a vengeance, thanks with a bit of help from Hamish and Andy, who've really oh. powered back into most markets, particularly in Melbourne, which is their home market, of course, doing very well and smooth, picking up a little bit in Melbourne, which is nice, matching some of its Sydney success. Yeah, Hamish and Andy doing well in Melbourne, but not as well in Sydney, as you say. They Correct. seem to have that home ground advantage yeah, in yeah, Melbourne. Yeah, it means a lot for them down there. And moving on to Brisbane now. And yeah, look, 97.3 dominating up there. It's won uh, all six surveys so far this year, Kate, so they're doing yeah. very well. Nova's off the boil a little bit, but it's still number one under 40, so they're happy with that. Uh, Triple M, yeah, look, doing well in Sydney there. Uh, Marto and Ed Cavalli doing the breakfast show. Look, it's working well, those two guys together. Mm -hmm. uh, hit. Um, 106, again, Hamish and Andy's boosted that a little bit up there, so it's, it's doing well for them too. And Adelaide next, and we can see Mix at the top there. Yeah, look, Mix, uh, ARN, look, it's been number one for a long time in Adelaide. Um, Jody and Soda, the breakfast show down there, look, doing fantastic business. They had a good survey. 5AA, been a couple of line-up changes there, but look, it's, it's still doing OK. Doesn't have a commercial AM competitor in Adelaide, so they re really measure how they're going against the ABC in that uh, market down there. And moving over to the west, and these are the ratings for Perth. Mix topping that list as well, and Nova yeah. second again. Yeah, look, Mix a long time uh, number one in Perth. Uh, hit the other Southern Cross Stereo station, doing very well. Again, a bit of a Hamish and Andy led recovery there for them. So Southern Cross Stereo doing well in that market with two of the top three. A 96 FM was the talking point. Look, it's down a little bit, but they're down significantly in breakfast and drive. The two, um, two time slots where they really need to do well. But, you know, they're just rebranding the station as KISS, although they're keeping the 96F name. A little bit confusing, maybe, but I think it'll probably bounce back in the future, 96 down there. All right, thanks, James. Uh, James Manning joining me up here on the desk, editor and publisher of Media Week. And, James, in communications or media news this week, the new communications minister, Mitch Fifield, we've finally heard from him. And... Perhaps you could interpret it that he's a little bit more open to, to reform. Yeah, look, he's talking very positive. He's saying things like, look, there will be change, you know, but um, just what sort of things we still don't know. It seems there's going to be hard to get consensus, but he's saying, oh, look, maybe there'll be some change without consensus. So yeah. people looking for change, and that's certainly not everybody. There's a, there's a few players now who really don't want things to change. So there's going to be a fair bit of argy-bargy before we get some clearer signals about, you know, what might and might not happen. And Justin Bieber in Australia and he's been making media appearances. I had trouble finding anything else on FM radio yesterday other than Justin Bieber who got access. Yeah look he, uh, he world famous rooftop for Southern Cross Australia and their hit network. So they had the, the only exclusive radio appearance for him. He did that down there. He, uh, in Sydney on Tuesday night he did the X Factor for seven. Mm -hmm. Ratings were okay. It didn't really increase the numbers much. Okay. And then on Wednesday morning he did um, a joint promotion with uh, it was a sort of an iHeart radio show but Seven Sunrise was involved so it was Kiss up here, Kyle and Jackie O. Again the ratings, you know, pop music doesn't rate. It does quite well in that narrow demo. Mm -hmm. But it really didn't boost Sunrise. Today actually got ahead of them that morning for the first time for a while that, that today sort of won um, with a little sizable majority. So, okay. yeah, so he's certainly a big buzz in the media, but it mm. doesn't give you a, a massive ratings push. Mm, interesting. Let's talk about moves at the top this week, some moves in the media space. And we had a return to the Australian. Yeah, look, John Lehman's going back there. He used to be their media writer years ago. He got out of the business for a little while. He came back in. He joined the Telegraph a couple of years ago as a sort of a specialist writer. I think he did an interesting Saturday column. But he's been wooed back to the Australian. Now he's going to be deputy editor, replacing yeah. Peter Frey, a former editor of the Herald, who's gone off. He's joining 
UTS going to be uh, academia. Okay, and uh, we also have a new sales uh, person or a head of sales person moving on. Uh, we've got Andrea Ingham. Yeah, she's go going to Spotify, the streaming music service there. So she left um, Southern Cross earlier this year, so it's a great job for her. So she's worked at Nine, she's worked at, uh, Macquarie, at uh, in radio at Southern Cross in the past. So, yeah, she's a good get for uh, Spotify, and I think it'll really uh, lift their profile and probably get yeah. them some new advertisers. Let's talk a bit about television now. Uh, Nine's confirmed that Carl Stefanovic will be hosting a, a new show. Yeah, look, the verdict uh, was originally the thought was it might be Sunday nights after yeah. 60 minutes. Now it's going into the Thursday slot, replacing the footy shows. I think October 8 will be the first show. Nine's just giving it five outings mm -hmm. just as a test to see how it goes. We'll and still have to wait. Oh, I guess they'll pre-film it, won't they? So we won't have to do a, a turnaround. I don't think it'll be live, but it'll probably be as live, probably just earlier in the day, I yeah. think, and they'll tidy it up a little bit in some post-production, which seems to work well now for, for topical programs. Um, but if it works well, they'll probably try and find a slot for it and maybe bring it back for a, a full year. Will that mean, you know, if they do that, might be a vacancy in uh, the Today Show and Breakfast TV? Interesting. Let's take a look at television ratings now. Uh, this is for week 39 on Free to Air. And you can see the X Factor topping that list. Yeah, look, Seven are uh, doing very well there. And we've seen the last couple of weeks some non-news shows getting in there. So X Factor, Peter Allen and 800 Words, that sort of Australian New Zealand co-pro with uh, Eric Thompson doing great business still for Seven. And turning the page. And here we've got the second page here. Yeah, look, X -Factor. more X Factor. Australian story. I think that was that Malcolm Turnbull uh, episode we mentioned last week. Yeah, did very well in that Four Corners that examined that uh, change of leadership for uh, yeah. the Prime Minister. Did great business too. Don't often see Four Corners. And we're moving to end. subscription television now. And. No surprise, we've got the AFL leading here. The, the footy finals are dominating. Yeah, they're doing very well. And also the, the sort of Fox footy, the pre and post show games also doing very well for them. The sort of Formula One on, uh, on mm. Fox Sports, that's a time friendly zone that was in Singapore. So you didn't have to stay up in the middle of the night to watch yep. that one, Kate. So it does, <laughs> does very well for them. OK, and turning the page once more and we can see Oh, the Simpsons making it in there as yeah, well. Yeah, Simpsons are a regular performer, Paw Patrol and uh, Top 20 Funny, a sort of a video compile show for Fox 8. Also in TV news this week, uh, plenty of new US shows coming through. Do you think any of these are likely to attract big audiences? Look, it's, it's going to be tough. Uh, Heroes Reborn's the first one that's sort of a reboot of the Heroes franchise. Look, started pretty modestly on 7, okay. but it's great to see them just giving these shows a go again in prime time. It's really hard to get away a US series these days. But there's a few other ones over the next couple of weeks that, that could... Quantico's one, I think, they've got going out on Sunday night. So that could... It's launched pretty well in the US. So look, all they would like is one or these one or two of these shows to do yeah. well and they could, you know, anchor a, a prime time spot for them. But it's been a while since a US series has managed to hold down a good prime time spot. And moving back to local production, SBS has announced a new food channel. What's the strategy here? They're saying 24 hours. Yeah, 24-7. Surprised a few people because, you know, their budgets are being cut. They're sort yeah. of crying poor and they go, well, how can you fund a, a new channel? Mm -hmm. But SBS is seeing this as a revenue stream for them. You know, they've done a deal with Scripps Network in the US to supply some sort of bulk uh, food programming. Right. How the audience will respond to these US food shows, that, yeah. you know, I'm not sure. But then SBS already produces a lot of their own food content and the repeats of that, I would imagine, will all go onto this channel. So, you know, they've done some modelling uh, at SBS to see how it will do in revenue and the other thing it could do well for them you know that SBS 2 hasn't really set the world alight so I think advertisers perhaps could be drawn to this channel in it and it might raise some extra dollars for them. Okay and then we've got Wish magazine it's celebrating 10 years. Yeah look it's a, it's a great little magazine it goes out on a Friday once a month in the Australian so it's a bit of an incentive to pick up the Friday edition of the paper they've done a whole series of 10 different covers it's out on Friday this week so um, David Mars the editor there and look he's done a good job and it's that's just a little bit of escapism for you if you like on the, at yeah. the end of the week and that's a, it's a luxury magazine it's printed on some great stock and um, yeah, people still like glossy pages don't they yeah look absolutely and it's an end of the the, the print world that still does
does very well, that luxury you know, end of the market. OK, let's just finish off with the Nielsen digital ad measurement because they're expanding this to, to mobile devices now. Yeah, look, this is I got a little bit confused when I first saw this, but this is campaign measurement as distinct from audience okay. measurement. So this tracks an ad campaign right. and now they're expanding it into mobile, which is so significant now. So you can track it across all the platforms on television, on radio, uh, in print and also on mobile, any device. So it's, it's a good little get. And we'll be hearing next week a little bit more about their mobile audience measurement, which is about to uh, break some new ground as well. Mm, an interesting space. James Manning, yeah. editor and publisher Thank of you. Media Week. Thanks for joining us as always. Great. That wraps up the program for this week. From the team here, thanks for your company.